Welcome to In Tech. my name's Luke and this is episode 2 and our developing a production ready pipeline in ADO. In episode 1 we created a nice basic pipeline as well as a destroy pipeline and we've done an overview of ADO, what pipelines are, installing a local agent etc. So if you need to set everything up and you don't really know anything about ADO and pipelines specifically, go check that out, it'll be linked in the description. It's kind of a prerequisite for this. The prerequisite is at least you have to set up a remote backend. Again, description has the GitHub for this, which you can use to just run it. Or if you want an in-depth of why you'd use it, how to make it, check out that video in the description as well. So, previously on this, we set up this. Oh my God, I'm flicking about like no one's business. So, previously, we set up that basic pipeline. Now, if you recall from our drawing here, the next step in this pipeline creation is in managing the state through the stages. So, let me show you. We'll go back here, back into pipelines. If we click on this pipeline, you can edit it to edit the file. But if we click on these three dots, we can go to settings and we can actually choose a different YAML file. So for this one, we're going to go to this manual validation. No, sorry, lock file artifact. Now if we click save, this pipeline will now automatically change to using that lock file one. So if we click edit, it will open up as lock file, which is what we're after. So same as before, it's on main, that's fine. Choosing the default pool, has some variables, that's all good. But the difference here you'll see is that there are multiple stages. Now, the way that we manage multiple stages here is by using this artifact. To show you, before we explain what it is, we'll show you what happens if you don't have this artifact. So let me remove that part and we'll remove this downloading part. And then let's just remove this one as well and then we'll validate and save. And then this commit will cause the pipeline to run. And if we open this up in a new, so let's just duplicate this out actually. And then we'll click on pipelines. You can see this is now running. There are two, because I've left my destroy one on. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Whoops, let's cancel that. For reference, if you done the same. Don't worry, you can always run your first pipeline again. That's the magic. But secondly, if we go here to edit pipeline, and this is the destroy one. Top right, settings. Let's just disable it. And there we go. That pipeline will not run, which is good. So now back to pipelines, we can see that this one's running. Let's see. Stage one ran successfully. The init, as it would. But now the plan fails. Why? Wait, you'll see when it loads, we'll refresh it. So we can see the back end initialization is required. Please run Terraform in it. But I did. Well, it's because the existing state isn't seen by plan because it was within this specific stage, so plan can't see it. So to fix that, what we do is we add these steps to create and publish or to publish and download an artifact. So as I've spoken about before, artifacts here are byproducts of your pipeline. Artifacts here is its own thing. We're not using artifacts as a service per se, we're using it within pipelines. So this publish artifact here is publishing it only so that it can be then used within this same pipeline again. So we can publish it here, the target path and the artifact name. So we're publishing the Terraform directory within our agent and we're calling it Terraform state. And that's an initialization and plan to pull it in. We then download this artifact. And as you can see, it's a task again. So it's like from here, you'd find if you do artifact, you can see download artifacts for file share. Then we'll build artifacts, then we'll the package, blah, 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 right? All this different stuff. So it uses that to download it. 
and it downloads it into Terraform on the agent. So now they have access to it. And then again, they push it up here and then we download it again in the next stage, which is the apply. So let's validate and save and this will commit and thus it will automatically run. So let's go and see. Now it's running. Nice handy thing as well is always have your pipeline that you're editing in one tab and then the runs in the other. So you can see now, and as of the last one, that it shows you the different stages. So if we look at the basic, everything's in this Terraform in it. It's just called initialization. Everything says V4. So what what passed, what didn't, I'd have to go and actually see. And even still, sometimes it doesn't give that much of, a, of an output, as you can see. So if we go back here, click on this stage, you can now see there are multiple stages. Initialization, plan, and apply, which all look good. If we click on the first one, you can then see initialization plan apply, and this little thing here toggles the drop down and it does all the stuff. And now you can see it's publishing this art pipeline artifact. Then after that, we'll go into plan, and the first thing it will do is download the artifact. So we'll just give it a second until it finishes doing stuff, and then we can have a look. Because what you also need to remember here is that you're handling the entire Terraform directory. That's why it takes so long, that's why it's so big. Because you can be using multiple providers, multiple packages, and you want to pass that through so that you can continue to use it. Because that's what it, it does essentially. Go to plan. Sometimes this kind of thing happens and you can't see much. If we refresh it, you see it will start working. But whilst that's starting to work, let's look at this and you can see, you can actually see a history of what's been working on the agent. Excuse me. We have this job Terraform in it, completed with results succeeded, and now it's running this job Terraform plan, which is this here, tells you the time and the date. And you can just leave this running, and when you're done, you can just cancel out, use Control C, I think it is, or Control D. That'll bring you out of it, exit, and then if you need it again, you can just run, run. So anyway, let's come back to here, the drop down has appeared. I have this initialized job, which is good. There we go, it's setting up the agent, blah, blah, blah. Checks out the repo, downloads the pipeline artifact. So now it downloads that Terraform directory. And then now, there's no red. It actually runs this Terraform task now, as you can see. And then post job, blah, 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 finalizes it. And then onto the apply, let's refresh. So at the plan at the end, see blah 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 now it's checks out this gets the pipeline artifact runs our terraform task but again there's nothing to change because we haven't made any changes so we'll just run through good as normal that's how to leverage artifacts to move information between stages with an ADO thanks for watching if you enjoyed it you know like comment subscribe the next episode we'll be looking at manual validation and then finally We'll be looking at leveraging multiple environments like this, dev, test, and prod. So we're a good halfway there. Any comments, questions, queries, let me know. And until the next one, I'll see you then. Take care.